All right, and we're live. So hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'll give it a little bit of time for people to pop on. Um, but I'm excited to be here today to give a little confab preview. Um, we do have some amazing artists with us who will be on our panel on confab on October 6th and 7th in Norman, Oklahoma at OU. Um, we have Jamie Bates Sloan with us tonight. Um, we also have Holly Wilson. Um, and Jason Kime. Sorry, I got a weird echo. I just didn't know where that was coming from. Um, but I have students bugging me too. Um, we have, so thank you all. <laughs> it was a rough start to begin with for joining us. Um, so these lovely people are gonna be on our Go Figure panel on October 7th at CONFAB, um, as well as Jamie is running a workshop on October 6th. Um, so we're here to, today to kind of introduce you to their work, um, talk about what the panel will be and also the just, kind of promote confab and we hope to see you all there um, registration is open and we have some exciting things happening that week so i'm going to go ahead and share a slideshow and then let them do some talking and i'm going to be quiet i'm cassidy fry by the way i'm a emerging board member with msa um so let's All right. So here's just our little confab screen as a reminder, our keynote lecture. Um, we do have an awards presentation as well, and there will be an iron pour on the 6th also. Um, and there's a workshop that goes along with that that is October 5th. If you want any more information, it is all on the MSA website for you. But I would like to turn it over to Jamie now. So. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jamie Bates Sloan. Um, my pronouns are she, they. Um, I am a assistant professor at uh, the University of Oklahoma in ceramics. Um, I also teach figurative sculpture as well. Um, and a little bit of business of art, a little bit of everything. Um, I, like I like to do a lot of stuff. Um, I've been working um, in figurative work for about uh, 15 years now, give or take, um, depending on when you say I started. If you ask my mom, she would probably say like third grade. Um, but, uh, unofficially just been working with the figure for a very long time, um, working predominantly in clay. Um, but mostly as like, I consider myself more of a ceramic sculptor than like a ceramic artist. Um, but I'm using mostly clay as my medium because it's the medium that I'm drawn to the most. Um, this piece here, um, is called I see or all seeing, um, it's, uh, probably, or it's about. I don't know, seven inches tall by five inches by uh, about four inches from the wall. Um, this is from a series of works I started creating about judgment. Um, this is whenever I started coming out about my queerness and started coming out um, and talking of being a little bit more open about that. So I was thinking a lot about the judgment that I was going to get from others. Um, so that's kind of where my work is going and thinking about how I can start to meld the ideas of psychology within my work with more ideas of mythology and witchcraft, which is a lot of fun. Um, if you wanna to go to the next slide, I can talk a little bit about these next pieces too, and then get onto my workshop talk stuff. Um, and here's some other examples of some of like the self-portrait work that I do. Um, most of my work is um, about me um, and I use myself as my own model. Um, why I think this is interesting is because women were often not allowed in academies. So they were um, left to sculpt themselves or draw themselves or um, paint and draw still lifes. Those things became um, not as high art um, for those reasons. So I kind of want to take that power back and continue to kind of like use myself as my own muse um, within my work. So that's where all of this work kind of comes from. Thinking about mental health, um, hope, the feet are talking about balance. Um, it's all kind of all related. You wanna to go to the next slide and I'll wrap it up. 
Um, these two pieces um, were created probably about the same year, but different headspaces. Um, so uh, the piece on the left uh, is titled Sadeje, and um, that is a Portuguese term for um, a feeling of melancholy and a longing for um, a time that has passed. So um, it was a piece that I made when I was trying to like, when I was just starting to get help for my depression um, and trying to be a little bit more open about that. And so, um, yeah, this was like, kind of like, is, am I ever gonna be myself again? Um, and then thinking, and the other piece is kind of thinking about like questioning whether motherhood is something that I actually want for myself. Um, so you'll notice like a lot of my work is reflective of my own experience. Um, and I choose to do that because I found through doing this, like I am not speaking to my own, only my experience, but to others as well. So um, in the workshop, I'll be demonstrating some uh, more vignettes of the facial features. So we'll be talking or we'll be, I'll be demonstrating how to sculpt the eye, the nose, the mouth and the ear. Um, and participants will also get to join in. Um, the way I sculpt is what I consider as like a sculpt by numbers or I use more shapes to sculpt the figure. So it kind of brings it down to a more accessible level um, where you're not having to learn each individual muscle bone and everything in the body, um, where it's more shape-based and you're creating um, from a complex or from a simple form to a complex object. Yeah. Sorry, I rambled for a while. <laughs> no, you're great. Don't... Wasn't even that long. Um, thank you so much, Jamie. <laughs> Um, and there are still spots available in the workshop for people to sign up for. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, you can find the link in the registration on the MSA website to do so. Um, it's really exciting to have these workshops. Normally with CONFAB, it's kind of a one day, a lot of talks, a lot of, so this time it's been able, we've been able to expand it to multiple days, two days, three, including the, the iron workshop and have a lot more going on. So, um, so Holly Wilson, would you like to talk about your work a bit? Sure. My name is Holly Wilson. Um, I refer to myself more as a, a just an artist storyteller. Uh, I I originally started as a, as a photographer and then got into sculpture and then that led me into clay and then that led me into bronze uh, through jewelry casting. And so for me, everything I make is based on story. So the piece you see here is called Bloodline, Keeper of the Seeds. And it's so much of my stories, kind of like Jamie said, is they're about me or my children or my family, but I feel there's a universality when you look at the work. Um, this in particular is all about women and how as a, I'm Delaware Lenape, and we were removed from the Northeast um, seven times, I think, maybe eight. I'm still doing research and pushed all the way from New Jersey, New York, through uh, uh, Indiana, Ohio, Kansas, Missouri. And my part of my group, I'm Delaware Nation, as well as a descendant of the uh, Delaware tribe of Oklahoma, got pushed all the way. We went all the way down into Texas. Um, which I found really odd to find later that I went to grad school where we lived in Nacogdoches and then came up and landed in Oklahoma. And so this piece in particular tells how women, um, a lot of tribes, when they were removed to Trail of Tears, they would take the seeds um, that they grew and they would sow them into their skirts so they would carry them with them. Um, and so they're the keeper of the seeds as far as food, but they're also the keeper of the seeds because they raise the children, they tell the stories, they pass down lineage and information. So the seeds are metaphorical on a lot of levels. And then the pieces themselves are based on, there's a series I, wor I work in called The Cigar Figures, and it's all based on a story my mom told me about the the stick people. And so I'll save that for the work, the talk, but, um, and then go ahead and go to the next slide. And that piece right there is about eight foot. So uh, I work small, uh, but it becomes really big. So um, I have one a piece that's the same size as far as the figures, but it's 22 foot long. 
So I'm very much uh, into, and I've done things that are 10 foot. And I love that because you actually get to move your arms so much more where with the little things, you're all crunched up, tiny working. And this is a piece called Belonging. And it's really based on this idea of finding balance and finding where you fit and where you belong. And so the geodes are broken open. And then um, I build the figures directly on the rocks. So there's no glue, there's no adhesives, there's no pens. The whole way they're built is balancing on this rock. And a lot of that for me, having... I don't know, this memory of removal is trying to find where I fit, where do I belong, not just in location, but also in place um, in myself. So that, um, like I said, I think that may be my story, but I think so many other people can lay their own story on top of that. So there you go. Oh, and my bronze work. Um, the one thing I do find different because I did clay, um, all of my work is one of a kind. Um, so I actually build it directly in wax and then cast it directly from the wax. So, cause to me, I like the idea that each piece is its own story. Um, and that's typically not how you see bronze work done. It's normally, here's an addition of five or 10, but for me, each figure is its own person, its own identity and its own story. So that's all. Great, Holly, thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Jason, let's hear it. Uh, I'm Jason Kimes. I've been uh, working just as a professional sculptor for, I don't know, probably 10, 15 years. Got out of grad school almost 20 years ago, but, you know, worked some outside of the art world for a few years. Had enough of academia, but finally found a way to make a living through art and have been doing that ever since. This uh, particular uh, sculpture is just the you know, stainless pieces of stainless steel welded together to make up the large, I think it's 11 and a half feet. And it was just about, you know, taking the first step of any project is the most important or the most difficult or really the most vital because nothing happens until that. And it's uh, nicely balanced. It's got about 600 pounds of extra stainless welded into the heel to counterbalance it. And that's a thousand pound piece of plate on the bottom so it's really stable but you know hopefully it doesn't look that stable so uh, a lot of my work is uh, figurative in general and there's only a, several, a few pieces that I've highlighted individual parts of the body such as the leg and the hand uh, I think I've got three or four that I've done those on large scale mostly I do full figure but uh, the hand is another example of one that I did similar to the foot, um, just out of cut pieces of core tin. I think that one's about seven or eight feet tall. But I really like highlighting individual aspects because the figurative form is so complex and complicated and really mechanical that it's just fa never endlessly fascinating to me. So I really like highlighting the really interesting detailed components of toes and fingers and the way those muscles work together. Um, so I've enjoyed taking those parts of the body and really blowing them up to just to really hone in on those individual parts. The figure in the crouching position is uh, the first oversized figure. That one's nine feet tall. Uh, that's why it's called 27 hands because uh, I don't know if you can tell from the image, but it's made out of horseshoes. It was the first time I'd gone larger than life size after working with live uh, life molds for several years. Someone gave me this 5,000 horseshoes as a challenge to do something with them. So I had to go larger than life to accommodate them the way that I've been using smaller pieces of steel. But I really liked the way it turned out and uh, it was meaningful to the collector because it was their horseshoes, so they could actually pick out some of the individual. They could rem remember the horses by looking at the sculpture. But um, that was sort of a holdover from grad school of a little bit more conceptual idea of like, how what's the minimum amount of space that a figure can inhabit physically and still be freestanding. But I really like the way it turned out. But the 27 hands is a reference to the measurement of a horse. So nine feet and horse measurements of hands is 
27. So if the horse was that tall, it'd be 27 hands tall. Thank you all so much for giving us a little peek into your work. I'm excited to hear like more about it, your work, and just the figure in sculpture in general at Confab on Saturday, October 7th. Let me just plug that again. Um, but can you all tell me a little bit of what your panel will be about? The Go Figure panel? panel? I'm, a, I'm assuming figure. I already know that, but... <laughs> Yeah, um, since I'm moderating, I'll, I'll answer those questions. Um, uh, we're going to be just kind of discussing kind of how we've gotten into figurative sculpture. Um, a lot of like talking with Holly, I haven't gotten to talk with Jason too much, but um, we kind of had different avenues into kind of ending up where we are now. Um, but it always kind of started with the figure. I know for me, it was that way, um, even as a child. So I think talking about how you know, our journey to where we are now um, through the figure. Um, and then we're gonna open it up to um, questions and conversation for the crowd. Did I miss anything? <laughs> nope. All right. Sounds about right. Thank you so much. Um, I wanna thank you all again for joining me today and giving this little preview into what will be going on on Confab. So, um, I just want to remind everybody again that the MSA Confab is coming up on October 6th and 7th of this year. It's going to be at the University of Oklahoma. Um, it does take place over multiple days this time. So on October 7th, we have our panel discussions, um, our keynote lecture, the master's award presentation. Um, that is a dinner that you do have to register for separately. Um, also, lunch is a separate registration, too, for Saturday. If you're interested, Friday is going to be our exhibition openings, workshops. Um, Jamie is hosting a workshop. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, there are still workshop spots available to register for. Um, we also have an iron pour on Friday, and there's a workshop on the Thursday prior for that iron pour if you want to create a piece for it. Um, we have four exhibitions going along with the confab as well. So it's going to be really exciting and a whole lot of fun. And you can just go and talk about sculpture because that's what we want to do all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope to see you all there. I know I will see you all there. Um, but if there are any questions at this moment too, please feel free to put it in the YouTube chat. Um, if not, we will see you all on October 6th and 7th, hopefully. Um, register for some workshops. We have exciting things going on. Oh, Letitia says, thank you for sharing. Inspiring group. <laughs> thank you, Letitia. <laughs> all right. Well, I hope you all have a great evening. And thank you again for joining us. And I'm excited Thanks. to see you. Thank you. I can't fab. So. Um, yeah. So I'm, we're, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I will be in touch with, uh, I, Letitia is probably going to help with this a little bit, I imagine, but um, I'll be in touch with some like uh, more information 